America and the University of North America. These black kids are our anchor, our main cathedral, our place of worship. This program arrives here in, in sacred to us. Before the 1800s, native tribes roamed free over a huge expanse of land west of the Missouri River. Geologic evidence, cave art, and storytelling among tribal groups shows the Plain Face and the Black Hills have been inhabited for several millennia. It's estimated there were 60 to 80 million Indians in tribes stretching from Canada to Texas, California to Tennessee. Crazy Horse was born as a member of the Oglala Lakota tribe near Rapid Creek on the edge of the Black Hills about 1840 and grew up with the traditional ways of the Lakota, preparing him for his future life as a warrior for the tribe. As with tradition, he was not named Crazy Horse. He started out as Curly, possibly because he had wavy hair. Later, after he proved himself in battle, Curly earned his father's name, Crazy Horse, Kashunga Witko, which means his horse is crazy. Over the decades, there have been several old pictures that have been claimed to be an image of Crazy Horse. These have been investigated, and there is no known picture of Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse was said to have asked those who requested a photograph, Would you imprison my shadow too? Pochak said the features of his gigantic mountain carving came from descriptions from those who knew the great warrior, including survivors of the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Those who knew him described his character as introspective. Crazy Horse is said to have always thought before speaking. Crazy Horse lost his mother as a boy and in his early teens witnessed an attack by the army on an Indian camp. It started as a misunderstanding over a stolen cow from a passing homesteader. As the years went on, encroaching miners and settlers to the plains and the Black Hills triggered a number of Indian wars which lasted 23 years. When he was old enough, Crazy Horse set out on one of the most important rites of passage to a Lakota warrior, a vision quest, or Hamle Chea, divined as crying for a vision. By his teens, Crazy Horse was a folk-like warrior. Black Elk, a respected Indian elder, once said, it was a vision that gave Crazy Horse his great power, that he could not be hurt. In 1876, Crazy Horse led a band of Lakota warriors against Custer's 7th U.S. Cavalry Regiment. At the time, it was called the Battle of the Little Big War, or Custer's Last Stand. Some Native Americans call it the Battle of the Greasy Grass. Many Native Americans look on that battle as a victory over a much stronger force. After the battle, the U.S. government rounded up Northern Plains tribes that resisted. Crazy Horse continued to resist. And in 1877, under a flag of truce, Crazy Horse went to Fort Robinson, Nebraska. Negotiations broke down because of incorrect translation. As Crazy Horse was escorted to jail, Crazy Horse struggled and drew his knife, and his friend Little Big Man tried to restrain him. It's recorded that an infantry guard made a lunge with a bayonet and mortally wounded the great warrior. Depending on the description of those who witnessed his death, Crazy Horse died that evening or early the next day. His parents transported him to his resting place, and the exact location is said to be a secret to this day.
The next chapter of the Crazy Horse story begins with the birth of Standing Bear near Pierce, South Dakota, along the Missouri River, probably 1874. In his early teens, he became one of the first Native Americans to attend Carlisle Indian School in Pennsylvania, where he took on the name of Henry, chosen at random from a list of names. For most, all traces of their traditional Indian lives were suddenly and forcefully removed, beginning with the hair, which was cut short. Traditional clothing was removed and destroyed. Speaking the tribal language was punished severely with the intent to remake them into the image preferred by the leaders of the school. Results of this process varied over the decades as it was carried out in Indian boarding schools across the country. <clears throat> Standing Bear, as a result of attending Carlisle, says he concluded that in order to best help his people, it would be necessary to learn the ways of the non-native world. He began to develop leadership skills like public speaking and writing. He realized that the battle for cultural survival was no longer to be waged with weapons, but with words and ideas. He became a strong proponent of education. He attended college in Chicago while he worked for Sears Roebuck Company. As a result of his education and the willingness to engage the non-Indian world, he became heavily involved in the affairs of his people over the course of his life. There was another important story at about the same time, which in many ways seems to parallel the life of Henry Standing Bear. Sculptor Korczak Tchaikovsky was born in Boston, Polish descent. He suddenly became